Okay, let's talk about parametric graphing. Both of the kinds of graphing that I'm going to describe in this video are different from the normal kind of graphing, which I uh, introduced several videos ago. The normal kind of graphing is all about looking at, at the behavior of a certain function uh, by graphing the input values of that function with the output values of that function, and that gives you a way to visualize it. Uh, parametric graphing, though, looks at it in a totally different way. Instead of thinking about just one function, you provide two functions, one function for x and one function for y, both, both based on a third variable uh, called t. So what you're doing here is you're saying this function describes my horizontal motion, and this y function describes my vertical motion, and when you graph them together, you're going to graph all the points x of t comma y of t for, for you know, as many values of t as you want. When you graph them together, you get a path. You get to see how your, how your 2D motion looks when providing two functions, one for your horizontal motion and one for your vertical motion. So let me do an example. The example I've chosen is x of t equals t plus 2 and y of t is t squared. So what I'm saying here is this is my horizontal motion. That describes my horizontal motion, and this y function describes my vertical motion. What did my entire path look like if that's how I traveled horizontally and vertically? So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to plot points. We're going to plot values of t, and then find out the x and y coordinates that go with those, and then plot those on our axes. So I'm going to do a few values of t. How about negative 1, 0, 1, 2, uh, maybe 3, sure. So x of t, we just plug in our t value into the x function. That gives us a 1 there, and also a 1 for y. 0, that's going to be 2. 0 squared is 0. Now we get 3 and 1 again, 4 and 4, and then 5 and 9. OK, so now we can actually plot these points, x comma y, on our axes. So let's start with 1 comma 1. That's going to be uh, something like there. 2 comma 0 is like here. 3 comma 1, about there. 4 comma 4 is a bit higher up there, and 3 comma 9 is probably much higher, like up here. So what we get is a parabola. So you've seen this sort of graph before. Um, so you could also draw this same graph by uh, imposing the relationship on x and y, y equals uh, x minus 2 squared. And you can see that by uh, solving this equation for t and then plugging uh, whatever you get, t equals something, plugging that something in for t for the y equation, and you'll get the relationship y equals x minus 2 squared. But that's kind of an aside. That's not really what parametric graphing is about. It's not about trying to find the relationship between x and y. Parametric graphing is a different philosophy. It's about providing a function that describes your horizontal motion and a function that describes your vertical motion. And then you draw the path that those functions make together. So the fact that it's equivalent to a certain uh, function, a certain relationship between x and y, is sort of irrelevant. It's not really what you're focused on when you're looking at a parametric graph. Um, let's look at another example. This is with x of t equals cosine of t and y of t equals sine of t. So remember in the trigonometry video we talked about how uh, another way to interpret cosine and sine values are as the x and y coordinates of the unit circle uh, for a given angle that a point makes with the x-axis. So for that reason this graph is actually going to be a perfect circle. Yeah, real perfect. See how perfect that is? Yeah, so <laughs> it ought to be a perfect circle. And the reason we're getting that is, is simply because uh, the cosine and sine values give you the x and y coordinates of points on the circle for a given angle, uh, in this case t, but it could be you know 45 degrees or 90 degrees or anything like that. It's worth noting that it would be not as easy to graph a circle by trying to impose a relationship or come up with a function so we have the, the values, or sorry, the points x and f of x, right? In fact, that would be impossible because say at this at this point this x value we're getting two y values and that's not okay if you're just talking about one function so you'd have to describe this with two separate functions if you were uh, trying to graph this in the more traditional uh, way um, but parametric graphs alleviates that restriction and I kinda like parametric graphs for that reason you don't have to have an explicit relationship between x and y uh, to graph whatever shape you want to make in parametric equations. You just have to have a function that describes your horizontal motion and a function that describes your vertical motion. So that's about all I'm going to say about parametric graphs. I think it's enough that you've been exposed to them uh, before you get into calculus. In calculus, we'll actually look at analyzing uh, the paths that these, uh, 
that these uh, functions describe and things like that, analyzing those functions. Uh, let's move on to talk about polar graphing. Polar graphing is a little bit more radical <laughs> than uh, parametric graphing. Now we have totally new variables. Uh, so now we're going to graph the points uh, with the coordinate system r comma theta. So what this means, r is your distance from the origin and theta is the angle that you make with the positive x-axis. So let me show you what that means by uh, plotting a few points. 1 comma pi over 4, so that means my distance from the origin is 1 unit and my angle that I make with the positive x-axis is pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So that would describe this point right here if that's one unit away from the origin. Um, so you can think about plotting points in polar graphs as uh, say you're standing at the origin and facing out along the positive x-axis. Now rotate yourself whatever theta you have. I've, I haven't mentioned theta before. Theta is just a Greek letter that's often used for angles. But in any case, rotate the theta that you have for your point and then take however many steps you have equal to the distance or your r-coordinate. So let's do another example. 3 comma pi over 2, so you're going to face along the x-axis and then turn 90 degrees, or turn pi over 2 radians, and then take three steps out. So that puts you out here. Let's do one more. How about negative 2 comma pi? So there you're going to turn all the way, 180 degrees, facing the opposite direction, but then instead of taking two steps forward, that would be if this was a positive 2, you're going to take two steps back. So that gives you actually this point. So you can either take steps forward, like positive steps, or you can take steps backward, like negative steps. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how plotting points with r and theta works. I think it's a, it's a good analogy to think about yourself actually rotating and then walking out the certain distance uh, to plot those points. Uh, but you can actually graph functions in this way by uh, what you're going to do is graph the points r of theta comma theta. You're going to uh, graph the outputs of r of theta with the input being theta, but you graph it in this coordinate system. So here's an example, r of theta equals theta. Think about what this means. This means that whatever angle you're making with the x-axis, take that many steps out. So what you're going to get is this spiral. Right? I've only, I've only graphed theta from 0 to 2 pi, but this could actually keep going uh, for a theta bigger than 2 pi. So you get this spiral, and, and that's because as your angle increases, as you sweep out uh, making this circle, the distance that, that I want you to walk is also increasing because that's precisely equal to uh, your theta. So that's why you get this spiral. And I think you can see why it would be a lot harder to draw this graph with, you know, with x and f of x, the, the old way, or, or the more common way, because in particular, it's going to be hard because you're going to have to have multiple functions because you're getting two output values for or two y values for one x value. Furthermore, if this spiral continued to go, then you could get infinite, or you know, as many y values as you want for a given x value if this spiral uh, were allowed to continue. Um, you can also get some other really uh, strange looking graphs in polar graphing. Here's an example, cosine theta plus one half. This looks something like this. You get this little this little uh, thing in the middle, a, a circle with a little extra circle inside. So uh, I didn't draw it perfectly, it should look more circular than that, but you can get very strange looking functions. Imagine if you were trying to graph this with x and f of x, it wouldn't really work. Also, uh, here's another example. You can get these little petals uh, with this particular function. So you get very strange looking functions, and that might make you think, well, what's the point? Why would you ever want to use polar graphing? I actually think polar graphing ha definitely has its place because suppose you were uh, thinking about a sprinkler or something and you, you wanted to get a, get a picture of how that sprinkler waters and maybe the distance that that sprinkler can shoot water depends on the angle that it's rotated or whatever angle you're talking about. Maybe you get a graph that looks like this and that's going to give you a nice visualization that'll tell you where you ought to plant your plant your plants or do things to optimize that function. Maybe other sprinkler heads have, have different functions. So I think polar graphing definitely has its place, especially because uh, nature tends to be more circular than uh, rectangular. Uh, R comma theta are known as polar coordinates, whereas X and Y are known as rectangular coordinates. 
Um, also, you can convert between polar and, and uh, rectangular by setting x equal to r cosine theta. So if you have a point r comma theta, the actual horizontal distance from the origin is given by r times cosine of theta, and y is given by r times sine theta. You also have the identity x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, these are going to help you out uh, when later in calculus when you have to convert between uh, polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. So that's all I'm going to say about polar graphing, and that actually is the end of our entire course, of the pre-calculus rapid review course. So I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the last several lecture videos. It's been a great learning experience for me to have made these videos, and I hope it's been a learning experience for you to watch them. Uh, please feel free to go to my website, ccantlabs.com, and uh, visit the contact page. Leave any kind of feedback you want, comments, questions, or, or anything you'd like. I'd be happy to hear. Uh, so without further ado, thank you for watching, and until next time, so long.